Soggy socks. Soggy socks. <laughs> I love soggy socks. Morning, day five. Soggy is pretty much the theme is all of our gear is pretty soggy right now. It's been, uh, it rained a little bit in the night, but everything's just very humid. We don't have very far to go today. We're just on Radiant Lake and we just have to head over to Francis, which is pretty light, um, but there's not many campsites that we'd want to stay at between Francis and Lake Levi. I don't know how it's pronounced, Lake Levi or Lake Laviel, so I'm just going to use Levi. But, um, so today's going to be a little bit more relaxing. Tomorrow will be really, really hard, and then we have kind of a slower pace to finish out our trip. Dude, wait, one. wait, Kate, for mine, we, I gotta look, I gotta be more on an angle, I think. <laughs> so You're like right behind me. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a good that's angle. A good one, that yeah. was a good one. That oh. one's pretty good. <laughs> Perfect. I'll be sure to feature that one. Oh, at no They're good. Exposure. They're good picks. Here, you look good. Go team. Catching lots of fish here. Just under the bridge, around the corner of the 235 Portage, right around the kind of little of a bend here, there's two campsites as you're coming down the river. And kind of just casting into this pool here. Kieran caught a nice, really nice bass. We've caught a couple in here. Rook really loves the fishing Rook, as usual. Rook is despising fishing, but things are hitting. You can almost tell like whether or not you have a bass on because the bass immediately are starting to jump in here Whereas the uh, fall fish are just staying in the water Ooh, getting lots of fight here. He's trying to come up Uh, Chub uh, yeah. Like yeah, whoa, there's a monster fish right underneath it. It's chasing it it's chasing this fish. It wants to eat this fish. Oh my gosh, I wish I had that. Oh, it's just, it's just took a swipe at it. I'm just holding this one here. It's a monster. I don't know what that, it's gotta be a bass or something that's chasing this fish and it wants to eat it. I gotta get this in. You can see there's two. Whoa. You can see there's two now. There's a monster bass that was chasing this guy. I was basically using this guy for bait, get him off, and then toss the next one in and try to get this guy. That was crazy. Oh that was my. a pretty big fall fish. Did you see that fish that was chasing it no, though? Like it was chasing the chub? Yeah, like I could see it underwater. Nice little bass here. Nice, got off. Just a little guy. Kieran's got a little fight going on over there. No! Oh my god. It's so hard without a net. I know. You gotta just be quick. I know, just grab him. That was a really nice fish. I Man, just caught a really sweet bass between the two portages after Radiant Lake, the 235 and the six something. And uh, we caught tons of bass in there and we lost even more <laughs> than we caught it seemed, but I managed to get one good one in the boat. Kate's uh, just about to go for a load on the portage. It's a slower day today, so we got lots of time and uh, we appreciate Rook sticking around <laughs> and allowing us to catch a few fish. The boys are coming around the bend and they say, keep that knife out. So it looks like we've got a couple fish getting ready to go. 
Snowy. Hold them sideways there. Smile, man. Nice. Bring it here, Noah. Slowly start walking. I'm just gonna fling it. Yeah. Here. Just keep it slow. Woo! Yeah, buddy, keep it low, Get keep it, it on the, the ground. ground. <laughs> wow, that's a huge one, eh? <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. You didn't adjust the straps? Press the bottom. Still nice and loose for you. Okay, thanks. We are doing a portion of the Minas Link now, the portion that goes from uh, Brent all the way to Opiongo. And typically a lot of the times people do this in a whole circle route, but you're allowed to do it in stretches. So every year we're doing another stretch. Today we only had to go from Radiant to Francis. If we were doing the whole link in one shot, wouldn't even have put the line in at these spots. Would have thought we were too rushed for time. We don't, we had to keep pace. We have to keep a move on. We have to go as far as we can. And there are amazing times where we do those challenges as well. So it's nice to find a blend of times where you have to push yourself. Tomorrow, we will not be putting a fishing line in the water because we have 15 portages, 6,700 meters to do. So tomorrow will not be a fishing day, but today it is fishing. Morning of day six, we're on the water here. The nice early morning pack up. Still had to make a priority for some coffee. We did a wonderful quick tear down. The alarms went off at 5.15 in the morning and we're on the water by 6.30 today. We go up the Crow River. So we have some major elevation gains. We have 15 portages we need to take care of. We have a 2400 followed right by a 1200 back to back. So gonna be a long morning so we got a nice early start and hopefully everything goes smoothly so right through this channel the Crow River and the Petawawa meet we are going to be veering right headed up the Crow River and the Petawawa continues left Okay, because I can put this down and then help you get your stuff on. Okay. Come on, Eric. Hold it down. Go, bud. Noah and I here, and <laughs> we thought we'd line the 20 meters, and this is how it's going. <laughs> hey, Noah. Hey, Noah. Looking good, bud. Bad. <laughs> could have paddled too. Could, could have paddled, yeah. <laughs> well, we couldn't have got up that little yeah, I don't think we could. Probably have to go through the middle. Probably have to go through the middle. Keep the boat straight.
Yeah, good boy. Now lay down. Lay down. Down here. No, down here. Good boy. Good job, Rook. We're on the 2,475 meter portage from uh, just on the Crow River. Right after this, we have one that is 1,200 meters, but this is a nice path so far. Not a ton of uphill. And you can see just it's riverside the whole time. So rushing water, beautiful stuff to look at just while you're portaging. So really nice, enjoying this so far. Like not enjoying it, but. We made it! We made it! White Partridge Creek to the Crow River. We are gonna stop for a quick snack. Kate's already got the protein bar. And literally right across here, right across the river, <laughs> you can see the next portage. You don't wanna paddle? I mean, Rick will swim across. The next portage is right there. Let's go ahead guys. Good job bro. There goes the crow. And there goes the no. Uh, wow. It's only 10 o'clock. I thought it was like 11 o'clock yeah, but we're cruising. What time did we start? 6.30? So we have been gone for three and a half hours. <laughs> it's been good though. Like a steady, yeah. we've been taking a lot of breaks on these portages so they don't feel yeah. horrible. Which I really like. I'm gonna need a lot of breaks on this one. Yeah. Made it through the 1200 team, well done. It was not as bad as we thought, it was uphill to start. But then after that it was just level and long so. I'd say there was just as much. Yeah, there was just as much downhill as there was, even more downhill or flat. So if you're coming uh, up the Crow, the 1200 isn't as bad as initially thought. So we thought it was uh, very reasonable. Now we're going to keep going up the Crow. We got eight more portages to go. A quick mid lake water pump to get us through for the last couple bit. Couple bits. Last couple bit. <laughs> <laughs> the last stretch of the our last, trip today. The last stretch of our trip. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're on the Croat River Portage. I think it's number 10 or 11 of the day. Today is just portage after portage after portage after portage. Woo! and then 11 more times. So we have 15 of them, spanning all the way from 2,475 meters to the short 20 meters. The Crow River on the map says it can be challenging because of water levels. And that could be true, but we have not experienced that this trip. We're kind of stopped, so. Um, I the sprint's gonna go in, so paddle right, right? Okay, I think we're good. I think we're braced. Yep. Good, good. Now out. Good. Good job. Awesome job, Kate. For some reason, Kate and I forgot to put on our PFDs after the last portage. It's always best practice to put these on and we ensured not to make that mistake again. Even though water levels are low, you never know what can happen. Yes, these are the unmarked swifts we're talking about. Yeah. We were looking for the portage sign, but it was pretty far away, so. If it stays like this, it'll be fine. It's just whether or not it'll be worse out there. As you can tell, the wind on this lake could have been a cause for concern. 
Normally, we would skirt the edges and slowly make our way down the shore of the wind-protected side. However, because we were completing a section of the Minas Link, it was imperative for us to stop at Minas' favorite site, which is on an island requiring a decent open water crossing. Before we began to make our trek, we decided to take a few hours for the wind to die down. The group was great at easing Graham's worries, and after lunch and a water refill, the team took off for the crossing. Unfortunately, when we arrived, the site and all of them near it were full. This was surprising to us as it requires significant effort to get to this location. Our team scouted out a poor site before making our way down three quarters of the lake to our eventual spot. It ended up being a great site after an extremely long day of paddling and 6,500 meters of portaging. Canoes over there, clothesline. Come on up the path. Huge site. Brooke, what you doing, buddy? Hey. This guy's pretty gassed. You have a long day? You have a long day out there? This is the rest. Pretty cool view. Looks like Noah found a nice little sitting spot. Yeah. Hot rock like a lizard. There you go. Beauty. Thank <laughs> you. 